having a little moment, like a little frustrated, meltdowny moment. You know how sometimes when you get dressed, you like nothing feels right. You put on certain things and they're like tighter than you they were the day before, or you have your period and so you don't want anything like clinging to your body. You want it to, you're like looking for comfort, but then you also want to look good because you're getting out of the house for the first time in weeks, whatever. But then you have, I mean, I have like a go-to outfit. A certain pair of pants or a, a dress, um, a sweater that you know you can layer over either. Like it's just, it works every time. You gotten compliments on it before, so you think it looks good probably and you're comfortable in it. And so even though your family has seen that, in, like you in that outfit, every time you've gone out, gone out of the house that winter, like you're gonna wear that outfit. I wish there was like that option for hair. I guess, I mean, like you could put it up, you have your bun or your ponytail or a clip now or hats. I'm finally starting to like feel, I used to wear a hat because I grew up on a farm I have something I wore to work in. So it's taken me like a little bit of retraining my mindset to think like you can dress up and wear a hat and it looks, it'll look good. Um, I mean, I think so. But I'm having a moment with my hair. <laughs> like, look, this is something. Okay, so if you don't have curly hair, um, curly hair is super fun because it's never the same from day to day. Never the same. And on your head like you do the same thing to all of your hair the same products the same routine also it takes you a long time to learn what to do did not learn how to take care of my girls until I was in my 30s but still despite the like love and care like you have to baby curls you have to just there's so much stuff you have to learn about hair <laughs> to take care of curly hair and yet somehow still you have so like you have a good side and a bad side. This is my good side, if you can see it, because I know it is kind of dark, it's cloudy today, and my hair is super dark, doesn't reflect a lot of light. Pretty even curls, like it's consistent. This side, this side, if my whole head was like this, I'd be fine. There's nothing technically wrong with these, this, I mean, this is a little crazy. I don't know what that guy's doing, but, this section right here, she don't like to curl. She didn't like to cooperate. The whole rest of the head got the memo. It's curly under here, but this is, look, nothing. What is going on? So this is my fight every single time I do my hair and why my hair often ends up just pulled back. But I, I just, I like my curls and I want them down and then I do have to deal with this. So I'm gonna go figure out what to do before I sit down and talk about knitting. <laughs> Peeling back the layers of the part I've been playing for you. Be so easy. Now I get queasy when things start going wrong. And in this life, we all know that the starting is the hardest. Welcome to the Lily Bean Podcast. My name is Juanita and this podcast is mainly about knitting. I do share a little bit of sewing projects and I live in the Ozarks of Arkansas with my husband, my three kids. We have a standard poodle, two cats and a bunny. And today's episode is a little bit about kind of developing a capsule wardrobe. I have been loving um, selecting pieces to knit this year that will fit into a wardrobe that's easy. That's mainly, I think when people think capsule wardrobe, or at least I did before, um, I pictured like maybe expensive pieces or it always had to be cream, black, white, you know, like it was very 
monochrome, which it can be. The reason for that is because those items will pair together well. Um, but you, the main thing is to think about pieces that you could kind of blindly grab random pieces from those and it would kind of, it would go multiple ways. So as knitters, we have this wonderful, um, what's the word? I don't want to say ability, but privilege. Like we can select, like if we have an image in our mind, or we see a picture, we're inspired by something, we can oftentimes find a pattern that will match that and knit something exactly for a whole in our wardrobe, something that we want to fill. And so today's episode, I thought I would talk about that. Um, I created a Unravelry, let me open it up, a uh, little bundle under my account on JJ Doucette is my username on Ravelry. And I named it Capsule Wardrobe and I have been putting in pieces that for me, I feel would fit, I could wear so many different ways, dress them up, wear them comfortably. I've really been loving, I talked about this before about trousers. Um, I have been loving trousers. I have, I love like a simple clean silhouette, uh, like with jeans, black jeans. Um, I love mom jeans. <laughs> uh, and I love stripes in my dresser drawer. I have a drawer where it's like my, my good t-shirts and then the next drawer down where it's my um, around the house pajamas, work in, whatever. It's mostly stripes. It's mostly stripes. I love a good stripe. And so I don't have any um, sweaters that I have knit yet that have stripes, but I have multiple ones picked out. So we'll go through, th through these. I'll share just my top favorites. Um, but there are 17 in this bundle. And what I think is great, because like sometimes when you think of a capsule wardrobe, you just think of certain colors, like black, white, tan. Those go pair really well together, but we all have different likes and styles and you can totally curate it to fit your style. Um, on the Brooke Willow podcast, she had a episode recently where she talked about finding your style and then knitting pieces that are in, in that fit your style. And that really resonated with me because sometimes I think as knitters, we get really excited about a new pattern. We love a designer. Um, we see the way that they pair, um, they'll style that piece, but it might not fit into, um, if we step back and looked at it, it wouldn't be something that would easily just fit into our wardrobe. So I'm looking for pieces that I could, so to speak, close my eyes and pull out a top and pants and, or a skirt or a dress and pretty much that they could go together. Um, I also like pieces that are really versatile that can be dressed up or down. And since I'm wearing it, I'll mention first this one that I have been obsessed with. I have, I knit this, um, I finished it in, I don't remember when I finished it. I remember when I was supposed to, I started it last year, um, but I can't remember. I finished it last year because I know I shared it in a podcast, but my Wool and Honey by Andrea Mowry. I knit this using um, palette by uh, Knit Picks. And I was a little nervous about palette just because for one, I mean, something that's amazing about it is there, hence the name, there are so many colors to choose from. Um, I found a lot of times I'll get excited about a yarn, like I like the yarn itself, but then the colors are limited. And I, like for one, I don't like white on me. I don't, it doesn't go with my coloring. Um, I prefer cream. And sometimes certain yarns will only have just the white or whatever. Like I, not every color is flattering on every person, right? Um, there's so many colors to choose from. It is a more rustic feel, the yarn is. And so I was nervous about how that would be because I thought, well, if anything, I could just wear it over something. But it's not oversized, right? My sleeves are fitted. Um, 
they are, I don't remember what you call this type of, I mean, this is obviously a yoke, but it's a yoked sweater, but then, you know, like my armpits here and the sweater is, well, I should sit up a little bit. Oh, okay. So the sweater does, um, the body is loose and wide. And I really like that because when you do wear, I have found certain pieces, especially if you are wearing things that are loose from your body, it's important to, um, if you show your wrists or able to show on a certain top, if you have like a button top, it can be very dressy. And I love wearing a turtleneck or something um, kind of closed up, but plus I've loved turtlenecks lately, like just like a thin layering piece, like the ones um, Madewell has some great ones. J. Crew has some great ones, like there's like a tissue turtleneck. Those are so nice to wear layered. Um, but if you're wearing that, it's really nice to be able to pull up your sleeve a little bit to show your wrists. Cause they say like the feminine points on a woman, her ankle, her wrists, collarbone, um, you know, like there's, if we highlight our, our waist where we draw attention to the smallest part, point of our waist. I don't know. I'm not going to talk about a bunch about it cause I'm not a, um, authority on it. It's just something like when I dress, I just remember those little points I've read somewhere from the um, interweb and you know I'll, but that's what I love about this is that these sleeves are fitted even though the body is loose and that it, it they are a shorter sleeve um so that you do have you know a little bit of your um, arm showing I it it because of this it also um, layers really well underneath of other things so um you know your jacket or a heavier sweater if you wanted if you're heading out and you need something a little more um, for the yarn itself, it has started to pill slightly, slightly, but not bad at all. Like, um, I have one of those little electric, um, you know, shavers that you can shave out your sweaters. And I haven't even had to do that yet. I just noticed today, like, tiniest bit of pilling. But if I run my shaver over that, it'll look, like, brand new. Um, the stitch definition is incredible with this yarn. And because of its slightly rustic, I can't remember if um, palette is a super wash or non super wash. I'll put it on the screen because I'll look on the tag, but um, because of its kind of grippier uh, quality, these little um, parts that kind of like, you know, float, some of them do, some of them don't. Um, there's not, I don't know, it's like not shifty. I feel like that's this to knit the sweater, you need something that's not too drapey. I should have a fuzz, I can see it. <laughs> Anyways, I have loved pairing this piece um, with high waisted skirts, with um, high waisted jeans, or high waisted trousers. I wear everything that's typically high waisted, but it is, I mean, because it is slightly um, cropped, like it hits which you could obviously adjust that, but mine hits like just below my belly button. And so if I wear a high-waisted trouser, it's like just enough of an overlap to um, where I feel comfortable. So I this is 10 out of 10, this pattern. Um, and I did not expect to love this as much. I just honestly had fallen in love with the pattern of the honeycomb on the yoke and I did not real think of like I did not realize the garment itself because there's been other things that I've I've knit and then not love which we will talk about that. Um, so ten out of ten on this pattern. Ooh. So a couple of our other the kind of categories that I was really drawn to are cardigans, pullovers. Um, vests and then camisoles. Um, my some of the cardigans that I feel are incredibly classic and a little traditional, so that they will be more timeless. They're not going to go out of style or fault by trend. Won't you know? I've seen these styles for as long as I can remember, and you can wear them different ways. They're so beautiful. Um, the champagne cardigan by Petite Knit, Seasons cardigan by Ozetta and the home cardigan 
by, hold on, let me click on it because I can't remember. Kadri. Two vests. Oh no, I just have the one. The one vest that I have, a lot of my items that I have picked out, you'll notice if you look at the bundle, are from Petite Knit because I feel like those items she knits are incredibly classic. Um, the Sunday Slipover, it's a striped vest, um, crew neck, and I just, I love it so much. I love it. And then some really basic, great um, pullovers. The Monday Sweater by Petite Knit. The Emerson Pullover by Vivian Xiao Chen. And... Sweater number 14 by My Favorite Things and the Home Sweater V-neck. Um, is that by Kadri? Yeah, the Home Sweater V-neck by Kadri and the Dartmoor Sweater by Kadri. Um, they're all, I mean, you could knit them with stripes without, knit them in colors that you're really drawn to. They have a very relaxed fit, all of them. Um, slightly, I mean, I don't know, just really comfortable. They're not gonna hug your body too much. They're beautiful. Two striped sweaters. I mean, you can knit them with or without, but the pattern, the sample they knit are with, but the Sunday sweater by Petite Knit and then the Marseille sweater the marseille sweater i have a ready to wear like a store-bought one that's very similar style like the stripes are identical um which is why i bought it when i saw it in the store because <laughs> i was like i've been wanting this and it was a more instant gratification um i really really want to knit this i was thinking of because i already have now a cream with black stripe knitting it in Kind of a gingerbready color with a cream stripe or something like that so I do not have yarn for that yet um, but I'm working on like picking out what I want to work out work on this year and then um, either picking from my stash or keeping an eye out for sales so I can get the yarn that I would like for those items and then camisoles camisoles are so versatile um, I first thought like a knitted camisole was a little weird I don't I don't know why I'm not um, before I had kids I had a very I mean I still have a small bust but I had a bust that was I feel like more conducive towards wearing a knitted camisole because I was thinking that you would have to wear where you don't have your bra strap showing um, but there's all kinds of things now that you can wear um, that are like I'll put them in the description box. I can't remember what they're called, nippies, I think, but it's like a silicone piece that you put on your breast. And I have loved that for wearing um, certain things in the summer because I don't like a strapless bra in a summer dress. I feel like it's, they're two different worlds and they're like fighting each other. I don't, I, strapless bras to me are incredibly uncomfortable. And I don't know, I've just gotten, much more, like comfort has become much more important to me as I've gotten older. But camisole number five and camisole number two by my favorite things. Um, they're beautiful, classic, and there was one more. Oh, the Montpellier, Montpellier top. It is so pretty. Um, when it was being test knit, it is by November Knits. Another person or another designer, they, um, Ann, I don't know if it's Ann or Annie Fiscum Sunday, but November Knits is the name that she publishes under. Um, she also, like a lot of her pieces I find are very classic uh, pieces that are not gonna go out of style. They're not, they, they are on trend, but they're also like, I remember my mom wearing tops like this when I grew up. Um, the arm, the line, what do you call it? The opening for the arm. It's like a lot, really low, but you can um, change that, she says in the pattern. And she's got it in this gorgeous kind of vibrant, ready, or orangish red. Um, but it would look beautiful also in a neutral 
and I kind of want to knit a couple of these. It's a worsted weight, so that top would knit, like practically knit itself, I feel like. So that's something I have on my to cast on um, list for this year because it's beautiful, it's so pretty. Um, so that's just a super quick rundown of some of the patterns that I had saved on my bundle. I know I went kind of fast through those, but I didn't want to linger on it too much. Um, Brooke, on Brooke Willow's podcast, on her one where she talks about um, picking out your style, she mentioned Pinterest, and that has been a favorite thing for me too. I, if I like, okay, so say um, black trouser pant, I am curious about how to wear them. How, like, how would this fit into my wardrobe? Do I see it re me really being able to wear it? So I will search black trouser pant outfit. And then um, when all the different outfits come up, if I see one that I, cause there's, they'll always like show like people walking in the streets of New York or a city. And you know, not all of us lead, lead those kind of lives where we're out in the city walking around in our well put together outfits. but. I like to, like, I'm starting to, to find more joy in just dressing for me. I'm not dressing for anyone else, and I like to wear things that make me feel good. Um, and so, like, we don't really live in an area where anyone else is wearing wide leg trouser pants, but I am because I love them. And so I searched black trouser pants, wide leg, and then looked at the outfits and found one it's not like you pick out that exact outfit, but you look and you're like, okay, um, large knit sweaters tucked in in the front look great with trousers or a, in the summertime, a fitted tank um, tucked in and then with sandals look great with trousers and something you can click on that picture and then scroll down and it'll give you more ideas that are similar to that exact picture. Um, and then I, I create boards on Sometimes I'll um, organize them by season and then other times I'll organize them by a specific thing where when I was trying to um, get inspired about, I don't know, white button downs or um, large oversized knit sweaters, how to pair that in because sometimes, I don't know, I just don't feel a lot of, I don't get a lot of ideas always just looking at my closet, but I'll do that and then I get excited. I'll spend a little bit of time um, putting together a few pieces that way I have like go-to outfits and when you have time and it sounds silly but when you have time at home um put your mirror if you have a long upright mirror put it in a good like lighting situation pull out pieces that you want to figure out how to put together and then make a few outfits that you know sit on Pinterest and if you have an item in your wardrobe that you're excited about and you want to see how to work it in um, look on Pinterest, but specify, I'll put whatever that item is and then outfit. Because if you just put black trouser pant or large knit sweater, um, oversized knit sweater, then it'll show you like more options to like purchase one or um, just random. But if I, you put outfit, then it's gonna show you the whole outfit together. Um, I forgot what else I was gonna say about that, but. This sweater, I love it. My Tecumseh, I love it, it is so, so comfortable, but I do find myself a little bit, I think, a harder time just wearing it as easily because um, I feel it's a little bit more of an attention getter. Like this one, someone might notice the texture on it. I do get compliments and you're like, oh, like, you know, I guess because of the honeycomb. But the, Tecumseh is more attention grabbing, which sometimes you want, sometimes you don't. Um, I finished my birch sweater by Pam Allen and I wanted to share that on here. So I'm gonna go put that on and then I'll be back. Okay. Here she is. Um, I made a few modifications to the pattern. Um, the sleeves were incredibly long. I knit them exactly the, th the way they said, and they came down past my fingertips. Like, I didn't cast off, I just had tried it on to, to double check the length, and they were really long. 
So I had to go back and actually change because like whatever the distance is between the decreases, I had to make this one like much shorter and then go ahead and just start the cuff because I knew, um, you know, you add this little bit of collar work here on the sleeve to match the neckline and I didn't want, I still wanted that, but I need them to be shorter. So when my arms are down, they come just right to my wrists. Um, this sweater is designed to be really oversized. All right, so let's look at this. I knit this with Simply Wool. Um, Simply Wool, I think this is Simply Wool, but this color was called Wilhelmina and it's by Knit Picks. So it's a very affordable sweater and I can't remember how many skeins I used, three I think. I have a, an entire skein left over and an extra ball, like a partial use, because I had bought, I bought yardage according to the pattern, but I did not need as much as I it said. Um, I will say I'm not 100% in love with it. Um, I love the color work itself, like just sitting here, it's very beautiful. Um, I don't have, like I've wanted to knit this sweater a long time and I'm very happy with the colors. And um, this is just wool of, no, simply wool. Um, and it's not scratchy for me. I, if you are super sensitive, it might bother you, but it doesn't bother me. Um, the neckline is a little more, I've got a sports bra on, so. <laughs> I went on my walk, walk with Luke this morning. I haven't gone on a walk in forever and I finally got to. We've had ice. Um, last week we were iced in. The week before that we had a really bad stomach bug and the ice storm has like broken a ton of branches down everywhere. So it's been, it's been a crazy couple weeks, but I finally got to go on a walk. I took the kids to my mom's. I went on a walk wearing a sports bra because I walked with Luke and I told you, I don't, this would be fine. Normally I think if I wear a regular bra, it's not going to be in the way, but I don't like having to worry about stuff sticking out on the neckline, but this neckline is beautiful. Um, the only thing I don't like, okay. One, the length on it does come down. Oh, you can't see, but mid butt. Okay. So mid butt, the, yo it's a yoke sweater, obviously. And it's, it is designed like you, if you look at the pattern, um, on the, the model, it is very oversized. And I knew that, um, it has this like, I don't know what to call it. It says it's a yoke sweater, but like long armpit. It feels like all, all my sweaters, like all my woolen honey and my Tecumseh both have that. What's this called? Do you know what this is called? I know this is a yoked sweater, but when the sleeve is like attached low, I know on a t-shirt that's called a dolman sleeve, but I don't know if that's what this is called. So if you know, please comment below because I keep feel like I keep referring to this in the podcast and I don't know what to call it. Um, when I knit my color work, this time for the first time ever, um, I was able to hold my yarn, like um, a color on each finger and knit and I loved it. And I felt like it wasn't making it too tight. I'm always worried about my color work because not... I've never had it because I've actively been working to not do it, but um, where the color work section, because your tension is different because you might be holding your yarn differently, the stitches could be tight and I never wanted the stitches to be tight. So they're not, they're very relaxed. Like in this section, it looks great. Um, but my issue is with this area and I think it might just be something from the pattern because on I did knit a size up. I knew I wanted it oversized. I was imagining this as something like, I'm really cold, I want just a big cozy sweater on. Um, I do not see myself wearing this out on an outfit that I feel put together. Um, maybe on one where I'm like leggings or I don't know, something where I'm just at home and I wanna be uh, cozy, but still look nice. Cause obviously she's still gorgeous. But uh, I blocked it. She is blocked. This area, this like section of the color work is a little bunchy. Like it kind of sticks out. And I noticed I went on Ravelry um, 
but can you see that? It's like I need either bigger boobs <laughs> to pull this in. Like maybe if someone had bigger boobs, I'm a smaller chested girl. Maybe that, or I mean, you'd have room <laughs> for larger biceps. I know that's not what the pattern is designed for, but um, it just punches out. And I think I blocked it. Um, I think I'm going to try steaming it just, you know, loosely to see if I can get that to kind of like lay down, but it doesn't look bad on the, when I'm doing the video, it's just like when I'm standing there in front of the mirror, when the first time I put it on and I looked in the mirror and I was like, what is that? Like, it looks like it's extra slee or fabric that's designed to like have a puff shoulder or something. Like I, I love a dramatic sleeve. I have um, a sweatshirt dress that's got a puff sleeve, but I don't always want to look like that. I don't know. So that, that, that was a little disappointing where I just was like, oh, cause I was enjoying knitting it so much and to put it on and it not be as good wearing it as it was knitting it, which my wool and honey was opposite. I had gotten so tired of, cause it's fingering weight and I got so tired of it at the end of knitting it. And then wearing it, I'm like, every time I put it on, I'm like, the sweater is amazing. Anyways. Um, so yeah, she's still pretty. I just, I oh, I was saying on Ravelry, I looked at the pictures of other people's projects and quite a bit of them ha would have kind of like bunching there. But I don't know if, maybe just once I like, because see there's like a fold from where it blocked. Maybe if I just steam that, it'll it'll relax but she's still good um the only other thing i wanted to show you on today's podcast is my emerson because it's been my soul i cast this off um i still have not cast on for the bougie sweatshirt and along for casey's and along because oh, i wanted to first finish this because i was working on the sleeves and i needed to get that done but then I wanted to work on my Emerson and I can't quite decide. I'm trying to decide between two patterns. Um, for the bougie sweatshirt knit along, which now I can't even think of what they're called. August pullover, I don't know. But anyways, I, if I cast it on, you'll see it next time. Um, but my Emerson, I have a Beautiful squishy collar on now. Double knit and it's so pretty. And I have gotten one sleeve picked up and then to pick this one up. So um, this was knit in like, I don't know, not that long, a day. When we were stuck inside with the ice and it fits perfect the length. It's not blocked so I know it's gonna grow, which is fine, but it's not too tight, not like the neck was great. The length is wonderful. Like it's a little bit short, but I know it's gonna block like a little bit longer. So I think it'll be just right and it'll still be oversized, but still it's just gonna be nice. I think, I mean, cause the wool and honey is a yoke, but this is a yoke. I think just yolks are harder, like as far as fit to get it, like to get it just right. And this with the set in sleeve, just seems to be a little more forgiving. Sorry, got a super long <laughs> needle to do my, I'm like missing cords for my needles. And so I've just been stuck with this like really long one, making it work. But all right, that's it for my project update. I will share a little tiny thing I sewed. Um, my daughter has been well, she was first, she got in this kick with uh, wanting a um, toy from a catalog and somehow she got her hands on a toy catalog and was looking at it and wanted it. And I was like, you know, kids sometimes will feel like you just have whatever money, like, well, you guys have money, can't you just, and I'm like, yeah, but that money's for bills or food or like we have the money, but it has a purpose already. And so I thought, well, why don't we use um, fabric we already have, we have materials, we'll like make some toys and then they'll be more special. And my girls are really excited. Do you know how long it took me to make this toy? <laughs> this one mouse. 
Oh my gosh, three total hours spread out over because I had to, I only had so much sewing time and I had I was sewing on bags for the woolly bean shop updates and then, um, you know, cooking, cleaning and doing homeschool and going over and helping my mom with things. And so I was like, I tell her, I said, I, had, I have one hour that I can. So it took me three hours over three days or you know what I mean, an hour a day. And I finally got done also sewing and then turn stuffing or turning out and stuffing these tiny little things. I should have made a bigger toy, but she's adorable. Um, I'll put the, you can get the pattern for it. You're like buy it on Etsy and I'll put that in the description box below, but they named her Gloria and now I'm supposed to knit her a tiny cowl, a tiny sweater and sew her a little skirt. So, and they want a whole family of them. Um, but I, my daughter wants rabbits and she said, can't you just make the face round? And I was like, yeah, well, I guess I, I'll figure this out. <laughs> um, I also sewed my first pair of stuffed animal pants and they turned out so cute and there's a little hole for the tail and that made me so happy. Um, I don't know. I got real excited and I was like, I can make, uh, pants that match his name is a little stuffed lamb and his name is Bob and it's my daughter's best friend like she takes him everywhere and I told her I was like I can make you matching pant pajama pants for you and Bob like I got so excited and Jeremy's like quit making promises because <laughs> then you're like he's just seeing the side of me where I'm like frustrated and you know overwhelmed with things to do but I think Gloria is pretty cute all right, that's it. So I hope you enjoyed today's podcast, even though it was random and I keep forgetting where to look at on the camera. I keep looking at the record button, so sorry. But um, yeah, stay warm and happy knitting, guys. See you next time. Bye.